it's always nice to come across some new weird and wacky theory from some of these conspiracy nuts. Today's theory is all about trains running on air. All aboard, next stop, Looney Town. But anyway, I bought this book yesterday, the English Electric Class 50, which is, it's about trains. Well, bearing in mind how much else during this video you totally fail to understand, I'm actually amazed that you realise that the book you purchased is actually about trains. Another save in there. Anyway, here we go. These are the old trains that, you, that we used to, well, I've been on several of these many times, but it's this bit here I'm drawing your attention to. What, that little sticky up bit? Couldn't you find out what it's called? It's called a pantograph. And here we go, electrified lines. Yes, electrified lines, where electric trains are powered by electric. Now, I've done a video where I've said, you never see sparks flying from these cables. Actually, the overhead electrification system, together with the pantographs, is a very good system for maintaining constant contact. However, they still require a distance of several metres on each side of the line without any bushes and shrubs and things in order to prevent fires caused by sparks. Yeah, and here they are. Let's see if I can find there's a better picture somewhere. I'm not going to bore you because I'm not, I'm not really a, a train spotter. <laughs> But here, there's the, that smoke coming off this engine. Yes, that smoke will be diesel smoke, because the photo is of a diesel locomotive. Now, if that was an electric um, engine, just like you'd, you'd like your scale electrics or your actual train sets, what the hell is all this smoke doing? Well, that would be a very good question, if only it was an electric loco. And when they start up, you can, I did that one where you get the, the clag, the black clag smoke coming off it, similar to what you find on the boats um, and other um, so-called electric things. What on earth are you talking about, you total gimboid? You don't get clouds of diesel smoke coming off of electric things. Anyway, where are we going? It's all this overhead wires. Well, instead of randomly pointing at things in this book, you could actually try reading the captions. A later variant of the danger overhead live wires which was attached to locomotives. And um, bits and bobs. Anyway, let's get to where I'm going with this. Like, Oh, yes. We want to get to where you're going with this. So I'm just... There you go. There's... Um, delivered in 1967. Blah, blah, blah. They're called... They are diesel hydraulics. The clue is in the name. It's a diesel engine. But what we're looking at here which I've found. This is the brand new EE. There's your, there's your pentagrams. Just just what? EE equals pentagrams? Really? All right, so let me get this straight here. 16 power unit prior to installation. But, but there you go. Here's your turbo or your superchargers. Superchargers. Yes, turbochargers, which you get on diesel engines and not electric motors. And pistons very much similar to the diesel engines with those sleeves in them. They're ginormous. So now you are accepting that they're diesel engines. So what's your problem? And like I said to you, they're sucking and compressing air. And the byproduct of it is, is that clag when they're cold. And once they get up to speed, you don't get that clag black smoke. Hold on. So now you're suggesting that if you compress air slowly, you get black smoke. And if this um, engine is just compressing air, what's it powered by? But here, where we are, air passes through a set of secondary filters and a mounted inducting, driving turbochargers. Yeah, air filters, like you've got on your car. You don't want to be sucking in dust and insects and passing canoeists. These electrical engines do not require overhead cables. You really have got yourself into a pickle here, haven't you, my love? So apparently this engine compresses air, it produces clouds of smoke, it doesn't run on diesel, even though it's got pistons, and it's electric, but it doesn't require an electrical feed. What the hell do you think it is? They don't require any um, oil tankers behind them to feed them with fuel. OK, you're going to reveal to us now what they're powered by? 
because they're working on the same technology that we've uh, we understand how aircraft and whatnot was made. But um, it's just me saying that um, everything that you think you know, you don't. So you are officer specialising in Dunning Kruger second class. You total smeghead. And there's the black clag stuff. It's called soot. But again, I don't know why you bothered buying this book if you're not going to read it. Look where your fingers are pointed. The locomotive is filled with eleven hundred gallon fuel tank. You know that the way they've hidden it is remarkable. To be quite honest with you. Oh yeah, they've hidden this so well. Look at that fuel tank detail. So we know there's oil in there. You need oil to keep it lubricated and whatnot. There's an air compressor. Well, Captain Incredulous, perhaps you should actually read this book you've bought. It is an air compressor that's slung underneath the loco and provides compressed air to the um, air braking system. Anyway, that's just really what I wanted to show you was that engine. I don't want to bore you. No, no, you haven't bored us at all. You've given us great entertainment so far. You know, you've seen trains, you've been on trains. I did a video on trains, the modern one that... Um, you know, but what the, the big the big thing I really want to get across here is the amazing level of stupidity that someone can show despite having had an educational system available to them. Is they're using these engines, and and in the old days you had the the coal and stuff behind being thrown into the engine. They don't have anything. Well, to be fair, you're correct on that. There is no longer a tender behind the locomotive, and no requirement for a fireman to gather shovelfuls of diesel and lob them into a firebox. They're not. As I said to you, if they were using traditional diesel like you do in your car, they'd need a giant oil tanker behind them, but they don't. No, you've got fuel tanks slung underneath the loco. Now, coal is not a bad store of energy, but you're talking 10 to 25 megajoules per kilogram. Whereas with diesel oil, you're talking 42 to 46. Much, much better. A much higher store of energy. 1,100 gallons of diesel is going to get you quite a long way. And also, all you passengers that commute, you should rightly so be in uproar about the cost of your tickets because they're using these free energy generating gas turbine engines, diesel engines, using the same same technology. What on earth are you talking about? Free energy gas turbine diesel engines. I mean, gas turbine engines run on gas, diesel engines run on diesel, and petrol engines run on petrol. Where's all this free energy coming from? And have you tried driving without filling your car? You're not going to get very far. And hey, there's, there's a good example there. Fires up in dramatic style there. I have never seen so much fail. That soot, if you stand near that loco, you will smell the diesel. But anyway, just like I say, and there's a... Oh, look. What's this? The technician's view... Staff electricians. What, what, what's, what's an electrician doing, you know? These locos were a massive leap forward. There was complicated electrics involved in it. For instance, they had systems to detect wheel slippage. If you've got electrics, you're going to need electricians. It's a piston-driven suck-and-blow engine. Right. Just for the sake of argument, let's say it's compressed air that is driving the train and this engine is producing the compressed air. What the hell is the engine running on? Do people know? I've no idea, but that's very clever. There's your pentagram, there's your 33. What, anything with a 5 on is a pentagram. And for your information, that's actually 50, because it's a class 50 locomotive. And the number 33 is because that one happened to be unit number 33. You complete twat. I just I like the way they put these books together. It's almost like a big piss take by them, isn't it? What's this one here? Well, that one obviously is another pentagram, and it's being manufactured by Q for a top British spy. Undergoing a power unit swap. And again, there's your turbos, or your turbochargers. That's how these engines work. Says the man who has absolutely no idea what a turbo is or how it works. For your information, a turbocharger uses the exhaust gas 
to operate a compressor to compress air to get more air into the engine so that you can burn more fuel and get more power. Anyway, there's just a quick one for you. Like it or loathe it. I'm going for loathe it. Do what you, you know, but it's just me saying to you. Hello everyone, look at me. I don't know what I'm talking about and I'm not embarrassed. We need to really, really get onto our governments and say we're sick and tired of it. Yeah, the education system obviously isn't working. You've been charging us for air. And I expect that you've been mouth breathing with it. There you go, that'll do. That was uh... a right load of crap. Earlier on, you said that EE was a pentagram. I think you'll find it stood for English Electric. And that's nothing to do with the trains being electric. English Electric was the name of the company that built them. That book there, Haynes, and these are, you know, you, you buy your Haynes manuals to repair cars and bits and bobs. Yes, you do. I think, though, in future, you should only buy books with pictures in and no words, because you don't use them anyway. So, Jones, you seem to basically think there are free energy machines producing compressed air, and that's what planes and trains run on. I don't see why. If the energy produced was free, the government could just tax you for use of the roads. Right now, you purchase petrol or diesel from a fuel station. The majority of that cost is tax. They're gaining nothing by hiding these free energy machines, which um, apparently break the laws of physics. Don't they, Scotty? I can't change the laws of physics. Anyway, until next time, stay sensible. I want to give massive thanks to all of my supporting members and patrons. Thank you all so very much. Shut up and sit down.